welcome to the 18th Annual Patrons and Donors Program, sponsored by the National Center for the Study of Civil Rights and African American Culture. This is our second year presenting this program to you virtually. My name is Reagan Stearns, and I'm the Associate Archivist here at Alabama State University. Please sit back, relax, and enjoy yourself as we share what the National Center and the ASU Archives have been up to this past year. First, Alabama State University's Provost, Dr. Carl Pettis, will bring us greetings on behalf of the administration. Good afternoon. I am Carl Pettis, Provost and Vice President for Academic Affairs at Alabama State University. On behalf of our Board of Trustees, our President, Dr. Quentin T. Ross, Jr., and our faculty, staff, and students, it gives me great pleasure to welcome you to the 18th Annual Patrons and Donors Program. It is sponsored by the National Center for the Study of Civil Rights and African American Culture at ASU in partnership with the university's archive department. Thanks to Dr. Janice Franklin, Dean and Project Director, and members of the National Center Steering Committee for presenting this annual tribute to our patrons and donors. Thanks also to the program participants and the National Center's patrons group, whom we honor today for their ongoing support. To our donors, we extend sincere appreciation for the valuable gifts to our archives. These gifts will support the center's mission of preserving African American history and culture here at Alabama State University. We appreciate your attendance at this event and we hope that you will enjoy today's program. Again, welcome. This portion of our program is dedicated to the patrons of the National Center who are a group of volunteers who support the center's efforts in fundraising and programming. Let's hear about the patrons from Dr. Janice Franklin and Mr. Bill Ford. Hello, I'm Dr. Janice Franklin, Dean of the Levi Watkins Learning Center and Project Director for the National Center for the Study of Civil Rights and African American Culture at Alabama State University. I'm here today to welcome all of you in our audience to our annual Patrons and Donor Program. First, we want to extend our sincere thanks to the patrons of the National Center who have done an outstanding job in supporting us through the years as we seek to achieve our mission of reaching and teaching others around the world about the history and culture of African Americans. This mission has a special focus on Alabama State University's rich history at the heart of the modern civil rights movement and the role of Montgomery in the history and culture of African Americans. The patrons of our center have worked diligently to assist us in carrying out our mission as advocates and as a support group in fundraising and promoting the work of our national center. So thanks to our patrons who have supported our mission for over 15 years from our first president, Mrs. Johnny Royster, and the first vice president, Mr. Herman Harris, to our current president, Mr. Bill Ford. We look forward to the continued partnership of the patrons through the years to come. Today's program also features our donors' contributions to our center. We join with our patrons today to announce and honor those who have made prestigious gifts to our center during the past year. These collections will be archived, made available to researchers worldwide, and treasured throughout the ages. Again, Welcome, and we hope that you will enjoy our 2021 Patrons and Donors Program. Thank you. Good afternoon. My name is Bill Ford, and I'm the newly elected president of the Patrons Board for the National Center for the Study of Civil Rights and African American Culture at Alabama State University. My involvement with the patrons started 10 years ago when my longtime friend, Dr. Howard Robinson, extended an invitation for me to become a member of the board. As a graduate of ASU and the son of two ASU graduates, there was no way I would refuse the opportunity and privilege to engage in activities that would advance and preserve the rich heritage and legacy of this fine university. Not just for the 150 years of educating generations of people like myself and others, but also for the integral role played in the areas of civil and human rights and a wide range of cultural breakthroughs in art, athletics, science, technology, and public policy. The Patrons Organization was formed to provide volunteers and fundraising support for the programs, activities, and mission of the National Center. The National Center Gala, the annual Calvin Fagan Community Art Show, our fun night of games called Game of Palooza, 
the Ralph D. Abernathy Lecture Series and the Gratz Symposium are just a sampling of the events supported by the patrons in the past. While these events and others like them have been negatively affected, curtailed, or canceled because of the ongoing global pandemic, we are eagerly looking forward to returning to a robust schedule as we gradually emerge from the limitations we've encountered for almost two years. We envision an expansion of our activities and fundraising efforts, including but not limited to field trips of the patrons to museums and venues of interest in the Southeast, like the National Civil Rights Museum at the Lorraine Hotel and the Stax Museum of American Soul Music, both in Memphis. Additionally, I would like the patrons to be more active in affecting and influencing the current issues impacting our culture in the 21st century and beyond, and not just examine trends and events in our past. If you are a current or returning patron, we again thank you for your service. Or if you would like to become a patron for the first time, I enthusiastically encourage you to go to the National Center website, which can be found on the Alabama State University site in the library section. There are multiple levels of membership to accommodate individuals, businesses, and community groups, so don't hesitate to join us in this grand endeavor. In closing, I would ask you all to be safe, stay strong, and God bless. Reverend Robert Gratz, who passed on September 20th, 2020, and his wife, Jean Gratz, who passed on December 16th, 2020, both served as ambassadors and residents at Alabama State University, where for over a decade, they worked with the National Center for the Study of Civil Rights and African American Culture. In presentations with the National Center staff, Reverend and Mrs. Gretz talked to visitors from around the globe, sharing their experiences as white supporters of the 1955-56 Montgomery bus boycott and spending a lifetime as champions of both civil and human rights. The Gretz also partnered with the National Center to host an annual Robert and Jean Gretz Symposium on Race and Reconciliation. They donated an important collection of personal papers to the ASU archives, and they chronicled their experiences in two books covering a half century of activism, A White Preacher's Memoir and the Montgomery Bus Boycott, and a preacher's message on race and reconciliation. The Gretz established their, a collection of their personal papers at the ASU archives in 2001 and have been growing that collection ever since. In Montgomery, Mrs. Gretz then attended Alabama State University, receiving her Bachelor's of Arts degree in early childhood education in 2015. After their passing, the Gretz children have continued the tradition by gifting to the ASU archives a silver platter given to Reverend and Mrs. Gretz by Reverend Martin and Coretta Scott King. Alabama State House of Representative member Thad McClammy, who passed away on August 21st, 2021, worked closely with the National Center, along with other supporters, as they acquired a 1960s era bus to interpret the Freedom Rides and brought to campus the Montgomery Interpretive Center for the Selma to Montgomery National Historic Trail. A 1966 graduate of Alabama State University, McClammy volunteered with the American Civil Liberties Union, worked with civil rights attorney Charles Conley, and was involved in the restoration of the Nat King Cole and the Nat King Cole House and the First Baptist Parsonage, both located on the campus of Alabama State University. McClammy, who served as president of Trinum Technical College from 1981 to 1995, also served in the Alabama House of Representatives from 1994 to 2021. McClammy was a member of Omega Psi Phi fraternity and began donating his personal papers to Alabama State University's archives in 2008. Doris Fred Sanders passed away on September 24th, 2021 and she was a member of the National Center's patrons. She was also a 1952 graduate of Tuskegee Institute, and she spent 36 years at Alabama State University as a faculty member. She was also a member of Delta Sigma Theta sorority. Sanders served as advisor for the Beta Eta chapter 
of Delta Sigma Theta at Alabama State University. For six decades, Doris Sanders was a member of the Dexter Avenue King Memorial Baptist Church, where she served as a volunteer at the Memorial Parsonage Museum. Sanders donated the collection of Arthur Chester Fred, her father, to the ASU archives. The Fred donation includes materials related to Arthur Fred's 20-year stint as the principal at the Hale County Training School and his subsequent leadership at the Tuscaloosa State Vocational School. And now, the Patriots president, Mr. Bill Ford, will announce our most distinguished patron awards. We think it is important to say thank you to our patrons for their support, enthusiasm, and dedication to the National Center programs and projects. Our annual merit awards recognize excellence in leadership, initiative, and service. As the president of the patrons board, I would like to take this time to acknowledge this year's awardees. The Citizen of the Year Award recognizes outstanding service by a member of the patron's general membership. This individual is also being recognized for willingness to serve, reliability, and a can-do attitude. The National Center is pleased to present the Citizen of the Year Award to Ms. Barbara Weatherly. The Patron of the Year is awarded to that patron who, because of their excellence in leadership, initiative, and service to the patrons, and their exceptional efforts to generate revenue for the National Center, deserves our recognition. The National Center is pleased to present the Patron of the Year Award to Ms. Doris Youngblood. The Director's Award recognizes the highest degree of sustained initiative, leadership, and service at any level of patron membership relative to particular goals set to meet a specific ongoing objective which directly benefits the National Center and the community it serves. The individual honored with this award is being recognized for his contributions or performance towards achieving the desired outcome. In recognition of that individual who has repeatedly stayed the course to meet such goals, the National Center is pleased to present the Director's Award to my fellow St. Jude Educational Institute graduate, Senator Kirk Hatcher. On behalf of the National Center for the Study of Civil Rights and African American Culture, I would like to thank the Honorable Senator Kirk Hatcher for his ongoing support of our mission we sincerely appreciate his generous contributions to our center that have assisted our efforts to provide outreach services and activities to our community. Thank you again, Senator Hatcher, our 2021 Distinguished Recipient of the Director's Award. We are indeed grateful for your support of our initiatives to inform and educate the citizens of Alabama on issues of voting rights and social justice. Thank you. We are so thankful for the support and work of our patrons. To learn more about the patrons, please be sure to visit the National Center's webpage and social media. Hello, my name is Erica Dudley. I'm the Access Services Librarian at the Levi Watkins Learning Center and a graduate student majoring in archival studies at Clayton State University. I assist the archives department with collections. Archives are important because they house items of historical value. 
In addition, they contain records that tell a story and provide evidence of events about individuals and institutions. The Alabama State University Archives is approaching 50 years old. It was formally organized in 1973. We collect material related to ASU's history, the modern civil rights movement, and Black Montgomery, Black Alabama in general. In addition to honoring our patrons, this program allows us an opportunity to say thank you to our donors. I'm so excited to share with you this year's donations to the Alabama State University Archives Department. To date, we have approximately 400 collections. Each year, we receive materials in the creation of new collections, and we do have some new collections to highlight today. We also receive additions to our existing collections, which are referred to as accretions. The archive staff thanks both our new and our existing donors for entrusting their material to our care. The archives has received various robust accretions to our collections this past year. The first that I would like to mention was donated by Mrs. Meta Gretz Ellis and was added to the Reverend Robert and Jean Gretz collection. Mrs. Ellis donated a silver serving platter to the archives, which was a gift to her parents from Dr. Martin Luther King Jr and Mrs. Coretta Scott King. The two families had become close during the Montgomery bus boycott, which began in December of 1955. Dr. King was the young pastor of the Dexter Avenue Baptist Church, having accepted the position in May of 1954. Dr. King helped to organize the Montgomery Improvement Association and was selected to be the visible leader of the boycott. Similarly, the Gretzes were newly arrived in Montgomery just months before the boycott began. Reverend Gretz was the newly assigned pastor of the Trinity Lutheran Church. The Gretzes were one of the few white Montgomery citizens to actively and publicly support the boycott. Reverend Gretz joined and was on the executive board of the Montgomery Improvement Association and participated in the carpool for boycotters. The Gretz's home was bombed several times as a result of their support. The silver platter was a farewell gift to the Gretz's from the Kings upon their moving from Montgomery to Columbus, Ohio in August of 1958. Next, I would like to highlight the donation of two books to the archives by Dr. Gwendolyn Cook. Dr. Cook is a 1965 alumni of Alabama State University. She has been an educator in schools and universities for over 36 years. Some of her positions include a secondary school principalship in Baltimore, Maryland, serving in the administration of Morgan State University, and consulting in the education field, which took her as far as the United Arab Emirates. Dr. Cook is also the author of Keys to Success for Urban School Principals, Look Up, Images in the Classroom, and Alternatives to Grade Retention. In 2016, Dr. Cook donated 75 pieces of art to Alabama State University's archives, including an impressive collection of African-American art by world-renowned artists. Such artists include Benny Andrews, Hale Woodruff, and Elizabeth Catlett, with the goal of inspiring the students of her alma mater. This year, Dr. Cook donated to the archives the book Lorna Simpson Collages and the exhibition catalog 30 Americans, which highlights the most prominent African American artists since the 1970s. These two books supplement her generous donation to us and I speak for the entire archives and university when I say thank you. Many of our accretions came from members of the Alabama State University community. One such example is Dr. Linda J. M. Holloway. Dr. Holloway is an associate professor and coordinator for the counseling programs in ASU's College of Education. In addition, she is a storyteller, an author, and a coach 
who has authored several works of children's literature. Dr. Holloway has donated copies of her previous titles, I Love My Happy Hair, Little Miss Linda Goes to Counseling, and Little Miss Linda Speaks Out About Sickle Cell Disease to the archives. And she has added to her collection her most recent work, Little Miss Linda Speaks About Rape. Dr. Holloway is quoted as stating that she was inspired to write children's books because of her desire to ensure that children have a safe and brave place to have conversations about topics that they may often find difficult to discuss. Speaking of our collections preserving the activities and legacies of our ASU presidents, our Dr. Clifford C. Baker collection grew this year courtesy of Ms. Alma Jean Baker wife of President Baker, and their son, Mr. Ed Presley. Dr. Baker served as Alabama State University's ninth president from 1991 to 1994. In addition to serving as president, Dr. Baker was also an alumnus of ASU. He earned a Bachelor of Science in Mathematics from ASU in 1954 and a Master of Education degree in 1956. Mrs. Baker is a proud Hornet as well and regularly adds to the Baker collection. This year, the Baker family donated a large assortment of ASU memorabilia, including photographic prints, copies of the ASU Today magazine, and a copy of President Baker's dissertation. Dr. Howard Robinson serves as ASU's archivist and as the library's Associate Director for Archives and Cultural Heritage. He established the Dr. Howard Robinson Collection many years ago in the archives. This collection serves as the repository for Dr. Robinson's research on the modern civil rights movement and the experiences and contributions of Montgomery, Alabama's black community. You will also find a large book collection as well as documents, and artifacts documenting the university. This year, Dr. Robinson added some pieces of art, photographs, and memorabilia reflecting current events to his collection. Ms. Frazing Taylor is the archive's resident expert genealogist. She is also an archivist and works closely with our volunteers. Ms. Taylor is actively involved in cultural memory work throughout the state of Alabama and in fact nationwide. Her collection reflects these activities. Ms. Taylor's recent additions to the Frazing Taylor Genealogy Collection include photographs, correspondence, and publications. In particular, this collection focuses on Ms. Taylor's area of expertise which is family history research. Ms. Taylor is spearheading the ASU archives in expanding our collection of obituaries and funeral programs of the black community in Montgomery, surrounding areas, and throughout Alabama. This project is meant to serve as a resource of information for researchers, and we're very excited about it. Anyone who is interested in contributing to funeral programs or obituaries are encouraged to contact the archives. Mr. Jason Trawick serves as the archives archives assistant. In addition to coordinating our researchers visits to the archives, Mr. Trawick has a deep interest in music. He established the African American Music Audio CD collection and regularly adds CDs and albums to it. This year, Mr. Trawick donated the 1975 recording, The Soul Train Gang, to the archives. Now let's spotlight our new collections. Members of the Alabama State University family who donated new collections to us include our president, Dr. Quentin Ross. Since 2017, Dr. Ross has served as the 15th president of Alabama State University. He is the son of Shirley A. and Quentin T. Ross Sr., who are both 1968 alumni of Alabama State University, and of course he is a proud alum himself, having earned three degrees from ASU. 
These include a bachelor's degree in political science, a master's degree in secondary English, and a doctorate of education in educational leadership. In the spring of 2020, President Ross's mantra of moving ASU 150 years forward and his Communiversity brand was tested when the world was affected by the global COVID-19 pandemic. Suddenly, the university had to adjust to a new virtual environment and President Ross guided us through this new normal, which is an environment that we're still navigating. Dr. Ross's collection includes photographs, clippings, and documents that reflect his tenure, and we look forward to working with him as his collection grows. We want to acknowledge and thank Dr. Shirley Jordan for her donation this summer of material in the creation of the Dr. Shirley Jordan Collection. This collection consists of documents reflecting Dr. Jordan's 20-year service to ASU's University College Department. Included are honors, college, faculty meeting minutes, program policies, and newsletters. There are also papers pertaining to oral history projects that Dr. Jordan lent her time and expertise to. Dr. Jordan worked closely with our own Dr. Howard Robinson to interview significant participants in the modern civil rights movement and individuals who contributed to the legacy of Alabama State University. We also want to thank everyone who participated in an oral history interview this year. Mr. Elvin Lang is one of the archive's most active volunteers. In addition to his own collection found in the archives, Mr. Lang constantly advocates for us in the form of bringing in new collections from the community. This past year, Mr. Lang helped to facilitate a new collection entitled the John W. Gibson Collection. Mr. Gibson was Mr. Lang's cousin and he passed in 2020. Mr. Gibson's sister, Barbara Gibson Jones, worked with Mr. Lang to donate some materials to our archives. Mr. Gibson donated plaques as well as framed photos of the U.S. Supreme Court with Justice Thurgood Marshall. Mr. Gibson had an interesting life, including being both an Army and an Air Force veteran. He was born in Mobile, Alabama, traveled the world in the armed services, and pursued a career in the legal field eventually retiring from the Minnesota Department of Human Rights as an attorney. Foster Dixon is a writer, editor, and teacher in Montgomery, Alabama. He has taught creative writing at the Booker T. Washington Magnet High School and is the recipient of many grants, fellowships, and residencies. He is the author of I Just Make People Up, Ramblings with Clark Walker. The Life and Poetry of John Beecher, Children of the Changing South, and Closed Ranks, The Whitehurst Case in Post-Civil Rights Montgomery. Mr. Dixon donated to the archives two copies of the book, Sketches of Newtown. This book is a compilation of student writings and research about Montgomery's Newtown neighborhood drawn from an ambitious oral history project. The Archives thanks Kay Gunter for donating a Young Folks edition of Uncle Tom's Cabin to us. Uncle Tom's Cabin is an anti-slavery novel by author Harriet Beecher Stowe, which was published in 1852. Uncle Tom's Cabin was the best-selling novel and the second best-selling book of the 19th century following the Bible. We received this copy by mail and we're so excited to receive it. It will be added to our rare book collection. We would also like to thank Mr. Levelyn Rome, who donated a copy of Salem Missionary Baptist Church's 150th anniversary program to the archives. Both of these new donations show the friendliness and mission that the ASU Archives shares with the community, which is to preserve and document the contributions and legacy of Black Alabama and Alabama State University. Our last new collection to highlight was donated by Ms. Melanie Everett Cummings. Ms. Cummings is a third generation graduate of Alabama State University where she received a bachelor's degree 
in 2000 and a master's degree in 2015. She is a veteran educator of the Montgomery Public School System and has a great interest in art. Her donation to the ASU archives is a ceramic art piece created by Mrs. Olene Black Underwood, a beloved pioneering educator in the field of athletics here at ASU. Ms. Underwood was also a talented artist who took up pottery during her spare time, which might come as a surprise to many. The ceramic rooster was presented to Ms. Cummings in 2001 by Dr. Jefferson Underwood II. Ms. Cummings graciously decided to donate this artwork to the archives so that it can be preserved and so that Mrs. Underwood's talents can be appreciated. The archives thanks all of our new and returning donors. Thank you so much. To learn more about these and other collections, please visit the archives website there you can make a research appointment, learn about new projects, or browse our digital library full of photos and information. This concludes our presentation and this year's Patrons and Donors event. As Dean of the Levi Watkins Learning Center and Project Director for the National Center for the Study of Civil Rights and African American Culture, I want to thank you for your attendance today. And we hope you have enjoyed this special virtual patrons and donors program. I would like also to thank all of our donors for these rich collections to be preserved in our archives and special collections as resources upon which our National Center builds its public programming. This year, our collections are diverse, including unique multimedia materials, books, photos, and three-dimensional objects that tell civil rights stories cultural heritage experiences, and much more. All of this will inform generations to come. This program also provides an opportunity for us to show our gratitude to the patrons of the National Center and to our honorees for their achievements and outstanding contributions. Thank you patrons once again for your outstanding support. On behalf of our steering committee, may I express my sincere appreciation to our university's administration, including President Ross, Chief of Staff Dr. Kevin Roll, and Provost Dr. Carl Pettis, along with Academic Affairs for their support. And please join me in thanking those who have made this program possible. Our Interim Associate Director and Historian, Dr. Howard Robinson, our Associate Archivist, Ms. Reagan Stearns, the Outstanding Staff of the University Archives, and this year's MC, Ms. Erica Dudley. Special thanks to historian Dr. Autry, the media production staff, and the dedicated staff members of the National Center. May I close by expressing my sincere appreciation to all of you in our audience for your ongoing contributions to our center and for your attendance at this year's Patrons and Donors Program. Thank you. Thank you for attending the 18th Annual Patrons and Donors Program. We hope to see you again in person soon. But until then, be safe and thank you.